Hi, welcome to Tech Dredge. If you want to see what happens when you tie a shockproof speaker to a car and then floor it, hit that subscribe button. In the meantime, I've got something much more exciting. Battle of the 80mm fans. So I complained in my Cooler Master Elite 120 case review that the 80mm fan included was a bit loud and so I bought a couple of Noctuas. I'm going to swap them out for the default and see what effect it has on CPU and motherboard temperatures if any. The Redux fans are what piqued my interest since Noctua are widely regarded as an expensive premium option and there is good reason for that so I was intrigued to see what they offered for those on a budget. This is a Noctua A8. It's the newest 80mm fan and features all of the awesome stuff that makes Noctua fans so special. The amazing packaging that's chock filled with accessories, the distinctive Noctua color scheme, all the little airflow optimizations that are typical of Noctua. All this comes at a price. This is an expensive fan. But for half the price you can get this, the Redux R8. It still comes in very nice packaging, but it's pretty spartan. The name of the fan and the Noctua logo are on the front of the box and there are tech specs on the back. Once you open the box, the fan is nicely presented, but that's pretty much all that's in the box. The fan and a set of mounting screws. None of those rubber anti-vibration mounts or low noise adapters here. The fan itself is the last generation model from the A8, so it lacks some of the airflow optimizations such as step inlets, but it's still the Noctua build quality you'd expect and still rocks a pretty stylish grey colour scheme. So all that's left to do is test it under full load. The main reason I've got these fans is to reduce noise coming from my office PC, but I'd also like to see if there is any significant reduction in either CPU or motherboard VRM temperatures. The CPU is not overclocked and it's cooled by a Noctua L9i. The ambient temperature is Australian summer. The motherboard is an ASRock Z97 ITX board, which is a truly terrible board, but it has the CPU fairly close to the 80mm intake on this case. The Gigabyte board I used to have uh, had the motherboard power delivery perfectly positioned to take advantage of the 80mm intake, so that's why I'll be testing VRM temperatures as well. So those are our testing criteria. Noise. CPU temperature, motherboard temperature. First test is with no 80mm fan, just the front intake and the CPU cooler. This is how the computer has been running for the last few months because the stock fan is just too loud. So at 59 decibels, the computer is pretty much silent with no fan attached. The VRM temperature is very high, pushing around 80 degrees Celsius, while the CPU is hovering at a surprisingly comfortable 62 degrees. Second test is with the Cooler Master 80mm fan installed. Unsurprisingly, noise shot way up to 75 decibels. Not exactly loud, but enough to be noticeable. The motherboard temperature dropped 4 degrees, which is a solid result, and the CPU temperature dropped a whopping 1 degree. Third is with the Noctua Redux R8. It is worth mentioning that the Noctua fans are much thicker than the Cooler Master fan, so the Noctua fans don't fit properly into the Cooler Master 120 case, so I improvised with Bluetack. With the Redux, the noise dropped a very impressive 10 decibels from the stock fan, pretty much cementing Noctua's reputation for quietness. Motherboard and CPU temperatures both dropped 1 degree. And fourth and last is the Noctua A8, a 2 degree temperature drop on the motherboard and no change in CPU temperature. Noise also held steady at 65 decibels, though it's worth noting because of the way I mounted the fan to make it fit, there was some vibration in the case that wouldn't usually have been there. So the results speak for themselves. There were slight improvements in performance and temperatures from the stock fans to the Noctua fans and a massive reduction in noise. And the half price Redux fan held its own surprisingly well against the more expensive fan, which makes it a really compelling buy if you just want a good performing fan with no frills. Though I still prefer the more expensive fan because it's really good to get that full suite of accessories such as extension cables and PWM splitters. You would be surprised how often you need them. I wouldn't have been able to do this test, for instance, if the A8 hadn't included a Y splitter. Thanks for watching Tech Dredge. I will see you next week.